Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nali again. Um, in this uh, series of videos, I'm going to be talking about uh, the particular property of gases, which is pressure, and how we describe pressure and how we measure it. The first thing about uh, pressure is you, you have to know a little bit uh, from physics, and uh, here's a very brief description of what, what pressure is. Basically, if you have any object, um, that has a particular mass, in this case given by the symbol m, and it has an acceleration which has a symbol a, acceleration being the change in the speed or velocity of, a, of that object, then the force of that object is defined in physics as the mass times its acceleration, so f equals ma. This is what we often call Newton's uh, second law of motion, and if you take a uh, uh, physics, the first semester of physics, which is mechanics, that's the one of the equations that you'll have to be able to use in uh, all kinds of applications. Now, <clears throat> on Earth, um, every object that's falling is accelerated, it's changing its velocity, and it has a constant acceleration. That value is due to the gravitational force that uh, Earth exerts on the object, and that constant value is often given the symbol g, uh, the acceleration, the constant acceleration is often given the symbol small g, and that has a value of 9.8 meters per second square. Now pressure is uh, a quantity that's related to the force and that's defined in physics as the force that an object has per unit area. So imagine you uh, put your hand into a fist and you start pounding on the surface of a table, okay? So the amount of force that your fist is hitting on that uh, area of the table, that's what's defined as the pressure, uh, uh, you know, the, the value of pressure that your fist is exerting. So another way to put this in terms of symbol pressure, which is symbolized as P, is equal to F force over A, where A is surface area. Now, on Earth, uh, we actually, um, as most of you know, are surrounded by a lot of gases. This is uh, uh, often, you can think of it as being surrounded by an ocean of gases. Instead of ocean of water, you have an ocean of gases, really, that surrounds Earth. So we're all on top of Earth here, on the surface of the Earth. And just from the surface all the way up to a certain height, there's all these gases that surround us. That's what is known as the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, and there's all these different gases that uh, are all present. Now, the question then is, if you have all these gases, right? Let's go back to that slide again. If you have all these gases, remember gases are also composed of molecules, and molecules have mass, right? So if they have mass, that means they're all going to be attracted to the surface of the Earth by the Earth's gravitational field, okay, gravitational force. In other words, all these gases exert some kind of force on the surface of the Earth, okay? And that force that's hitting a particular surface area of the Earth is then called the pressure of these atmosphere, okay, or, or of these gases. So that's what we refer to at as the Earth's atmospheric pressure, okay? So the gases, which is the atmospheric gases that surround Earth, exert pressure um, on the surface and every point in between all the way up till the end of the atmosphere when there's no more gases and we get into a vacuum. Um, this is called atmospheric pressure. It has a unit, the un unit itself is ATM, and we have a definition of what one ATM is the SI definition, and that is the amount of pressure that is exerted by a column of air, okay, because the, of course the gases that surround us uh, is what we call air, is the pressure exerted by a column of air that has a surface area of one squared meter. So in other words, if this is the surface of the Earth and I make a surface area of a one squared meter, one by one, right, one meter by one meter, and I extend this column all the way up until there's no more gases, there's no more atmosphere, okay? 
that column of air, the amount of force that that column of air exert on that one square meter area is what's defined as the atmospheric pressure. And you can calculate this because the height of the atmosphere is approximately 32 kilometers. It's obviously pretty high. Um, the air, if you were to calculate it by you know, considering the density of air, you'll find that the mass is a little over 10,000 kilograms, uh, which is fairly heavy. Okay, it's, This is approximately equal to the, to the mass of two uh, elephants. Okay, So it's, it's a pretty sizable mass. And so if you take that uh, mass multiplied by acceleration, m times g, okay, that becomes the force, and then divide that by the surface area, which is one squared meter, you'll get this quantity, which is called the atmospheric pressure. Okay, So the mass is about 10,000. It's really bigger than 10,000. Um, the exact number doesn't matter in this case, but it's a little bigger than 10,000 kilograms. You multiply that by the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 meters per second square as I mentioned before divide that by the square uh, meter which is the area that we define this uh, atmospheric pressure of you should get a number if you know the exact mass you'll get a number that corresponds to this value 100,001 325 Newton which is basically just these units combined together kilogram meter uh, per second square over squared meters and this is the SI unit for pressure Newton per square meter that's more commonly known as the Pascal because Pascal was the scientist who studied pressure um, made a lot of uh, you know discoveries about pressure so this particular uh, column of air the amount of force it exerts over the area its pressure is 101 325 Pascal um, that's defined as equal to one atmosphere. Okay, so this would be your SI unit. This would be more of a commonly used unit in either chemistry or in physics. Okay, the atmosphere unit. So pressure of the atmosphere is very important because depending on how these gases move and uh, you know fluctuate uh, in terms of how their pressure changes from one uh, part of the Earth to the other one. That's what generates um, wind patterns as well as weather patterns. So if you have a really hot day uh, versus a, a cold day, you know that's really due to the basically the number of gas particles that you have in the atmosphere, in the local atmosphere that surrounds your city or your uh, where you live. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about units of pressure. Okay. So there's, you know, pressure is obviously a, a real important qu quantity that uh, a lot of um, uh, people care about depending on its application. Uh, so there's several units that you want to keep in mind as far as pressure is concerned. So here I'm listing in a table uh, all the different units that you'll commonly encounter, although there's some that you'll see more often than others. So on the top here are the several different units. You have Pascal. You have bar, which is another unit of pressure more often used in the uh, weather prediction business. Uh, you have atmosphere, which is just you know more of the SI uh, type use. Tor, this is the one that we'll see very often, millimeters of mercury. And then you'll also see in the United States, we tend to use this measurement called pounds per square inch. Pounds being a unit of force, okay? And then square inch, of course, is the unit of area. So this is really comes straight from that definition of in physics of uh, force per unit area. So you have pounds per square inch. This is usually uh, abbreviated as PSI, as, as a lot of you probably know. Okay, so this table basically gives you the various conversion factors that you need in order to take one unit to the other one. So for example, if uh, in this particular case, let's take a look at tor because tor is the one that you'll see more often. One tor is defined as equal uh, to one millimeters of mercury. That's the same quantity. Uh, in one, in other words, the height of one millimeters of mercury is equal to this pressure of one tor. And we'll talk about how this is defined in in the second video, how we measure pressure using millimeter of mercury. But if you want to relate tor to Pascal, basically every one tor is equal to 133.3 Pascal. 
uh, one tor is equal to 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3 bar. Uh, one tor is equal to, here if you look at this one, 19.337 uh, times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, sorry about that. Um, there's a formatting issue there. I'm just going to extend this, this table a little bit uh, so you can see it better. But this should be 19.34 times 10 to the minus uh, 3. And uh, you can see that in this particular case, it's um, this one is 1 tor is equal to 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3 atmosphere. Okay, So these allows you to interconvert fairly uh, easily between um, the different units. Tor being the one that we'll see quite often. PSI sometimes we'll see as well. Okay, uh, And atmosphere, of course. Um, now, here I'm going to ask you a question, and you want to answer this question in the uh, form that's provided next to this video, okay, on the class website. So, uh, the question I'm asking is fairly simple. So, if if, if you live in the United States, uh, all your pressure units are usually given in units of PSI, pounds per square inch. So, the one that's commonly seen for pressure is tire pressure. So, if you have a bicycle or if you have a car, there's usually in the owner's manual a recommenda uh, recommended tire pressure in PSI and the for a bicycle commonly this is given around 37 psi for for kind of a standard bicycle so what i'm asking you in this case is what is the uh, height of mercury and in, in obviously now in units of millimeters of mercury that would correspond to 37 psi and again what i want you to do is uh, make this calculation and then answer it in the form that's provided next to the video okay in the second video i'll talk about how we measure pressure and again, the instruments that we use for those uh, purposes.